Hi there, welcome to this short series of videos where we're going to be looking at building balsa model aircraft just purely from plans, not from kits, but just purely from plans. And the first video we were looking at uh, plan selection, how we read and interpret the plans, what the designer and the draftsman who drew the plans were trying to tell us and also where we can get our plans from like Aerofred or Outer Zone. If you look in the description below you'll find links to those. And we also dealt with some of the pitfalls that you could encounter working with plans such as uh, things that didn't fit, stretch um, when the plans are printed or scanned. Now in this video we're going to be looking at how we convert these plans or the plans that we've got anyway into uh, our own kit if you like. How we transfer those images onto the balsa that we then cut out to use to make our aeroplanes. Well we've now selected our plans, we've been to the print shop, we've got them printed and if you're like me you've got a set on the wall that you can stare at forever to work out how you're going to build it and what's actually going on. Now these plans will probably have a set of templates whether it's for fuselage formers or like we've got here this is the the wing plan for the Avanti Patterns plane that I'm building at the moment and these have got a lovely set of profiles for that really nice tapered wing. There's actually 11 different um, patterns, ribs getting smaller from the central ribs to the tip. And how do we get that onto balsa that we can then cut it out? Well, there are three methods that I generally use. And the method I use invariably depends on the shape of what I want to cut out. Now, if I'm creating ribs here, I generally stick the patterns onto the balsa but I'll show you what I mean and I'll move the camera around and we'll have a look at that on the bench. Well the first technique I'd recommend is where we actually stick the pattern that we've cut out of our, pl out of our plans onto a piece of balsa but rather than sticking it onto the, the uh, raw balsa what I would suggest is spreading this blue masking tape onto the balsa first, sticking it on. Now this is Scotch blue and hopefully you can see the label there. Just decorator's masking tape, really good stuff. It sticks well but it peels off nice and clean. Once you've got the masking tape on you can then stick on your profile that you want to create. And that's how I've made all of these ribs for my Avanti. And I think you can just see the, the remains there of where I've cut out this rib here, I think number seven. And like I say, this peels off just lovely when you're, when you're finished with it. I won't take all of that off because I'll probably use this again. So it's a really good way of creating uh, the, the, the template or the, the component that we need without sticking something to the balsa that we then can't get off. To stick these onto the masking tape I actually use PVA. I just paint it on with a brush, roll it flat and then just make sure I put some weights on it on the table so it doesn't, as it dries, it doesn't warp up. And you probably need to leave it, leave it a good 24-36 hours to make sure that it doesn't warp. Now I needed a pair of these so once I've cut out the one rib I simply use a little bit of scrap balsa like I've got here, some drawing pins and I pin that first rib down to a second piece like I've done there and I just cut around it. I haven't sanded those yet, that's simply uh, how I cut it out. I will then sand those together so they're a perfect, uh, a perfect pair. And as I say, I've created all of these ribs. Now, the other thing you can do to create ribs, if you're building a wing where the, wing, the, the ribs are all identical, like here, this is for a, a trainer I'm building, 
I actually stuck the pattern to a piece of plywood. I cut the plywood out. Didn't bother with the blue because I don't envisage or I don't plan to remove this off the plywood. And I created a couple of templates. So I've got plywood template, plywood template. I put loads of pieces of balsa in between and sand it and plane it to the shape I need. And now I've got, I'm not sure how many are in here, I think there's about 20, 20 ribs in there that are all identical. There's, uh, I've done a separate video, if you look in the description below this, there'll be links to how I created pairs of ribs or how I create identical ribs. And um, it's a lot more detail. So that's the first technique I use, actually just sticking the template down onto the balsa. But as I say, this masking tape allows the profile to be just pulled straight off to leave you that lovely clean rib after you've sanded it. Now the other two techniques I use are probably best illustrated by having a look at the fin on this Avanti Patterns plane. And I'll zoom in in a minute and just uh, illustrate that in more detail. But essentially, the second technique is where you actually put pins through the plans to mark the boundaries of the objects that you're trying to recreate. Now you can do that with a, a former that you've actually cut out of the plan or you could just fold the plan up and, and do it over the balsa. And the third is where the third technique is actually where you draw out the component yourself by trying to uh, measure the components on the plan and then recreating that onto your sheet of balsa. But as I said, I'll zoom in now and I'll illustrate that a little bit more in depth. Now the second and third techniques are probably the easiest to, to do and also to uh, illustrate that, well, this fin is ideal. It's made up of four components, one, two, three, four, and we have the rudder made up of three components. And it's really important to observe, just to note, the grain direction here. And we have the vertical grain direction there. And again, crossways here. These pieces are put on with that direction of grain to stop these warping, twisting, and also to add rigidity. So it's really important that we pay attention to the grain direction that we're given on the plans. Now, when we look at the fin that I created for, for the plane, we can see that this piece of wood here has actually got a right angle there. And we can just shove our square against it like that. And it's really easy for us to take our ruler and just measure the size of that and to draw it out on a piece of balsa and then cut it out. There's no need to be cutting out the paper plan, sticking it on balsa, uh, it's just so much easier simply to measure it accurately and draw it out. And I did that with all of the pieces in this fin with the exception of this lovely sweeping curved piece here. Now to do that I used another technique. So just measuring is probably the third technique I mentioned, mentioned earlier. And the second technique is where you actually pin through the either the plan or you draw out the component like I've done here on this piece of tracing paper. I put on the tracing paper over the plan and I drew out that component that I needed. Now once I'd got that drawn out I actually laid it on a sheet of balsa of the right thickness and put in a pin prick there, one there, one there, one there, and I joined the dots. And then I went along and put in a pin prick every quarter of an inch, 10 mil, something like that, to illustrate this curve. I then drew that out on my piece of balsa and cut it out. And as you can see, I've done that and it's come out lovely and accurately. Yes, it needs a lot of sanding, but you would get that however you do it, trying to cut that curve with a, a, a scalpel. So hopefully you can see that by using a combination of techniques, we can create 
this whole fin and rudder without actually cutting up our plans and using glue. Just to measure out the components and draw them on the balsa or to create that template that we can then pin through. And as I think I said, we can also use the plan to pin through if we really wanted. I just thought this was a lot easier. Once you've got this drawn, it's a lot easier just to hold that on top of a piece of balsa than trying to locate your balsa under a plan that you can't see through. I've also created the elevators the, in, in exactly the same way as I did this by just simply measuring them and drawing them out. Really simple, it's, 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 it's not worth making this more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, so now we know how we're going to transfer our images onto the balsa. So we need to start thinking about cutting out the, the pieces, the components we need to actually do this build. Now, I've got these great plans here on the wall for an Avanti patterns plane that I'm building. And rather than cutting out all of the pieces first, what I would suggest you do is to work, in, uh, work on components in a single plane, if you like, or a single direction. So I would work on the longitudinal pieces that go front to back and forget about the side piece, the cross pieces like the formers and work on those once you've got this done. And the reason being is if there's any discrepancies in these plans, then these cross formers which you've spent ages cutting out may not fit. Much better to produce the sides and then to measure these formers, where the uh, cuts go, just to make sure, and the total height, just to make sure that they actually fit the fuselage sides that you've created. Or you may have fuselage sides with formers that don't fit. Now I've done that, I've made a couple of fuselage sides, I've had them back to back, I've sanded them together and they're identical. I've got all of the additional balsa, which is coming closer. I've got doublers, wing seat saddles here. I've got triangular stock and um, uh, engine mounts. Also got some doublers there. Now I finished all of that before I started to think about the cross formers. And yes, I use these as patterns, but I actually took a ruler and measured the heights of these and I measured that against my fuselage sides because at the end of the day these have to fit the fuselage and if they don't they're a waste of time so I actually used the fuselage sides as a pattern if you like to make sure that these are correct so I've now got all of the formers cut and as I said I went through before I cut them and just measured these against the fuselage sides I'd got to make sure that they fit. Hopefully this video has shown you how easy it can be to transfer the images from our plans onto our balsa and to start creating the components we need to build that aeroplane. Now in the next video we're going to be looking at some of the additional components that we need that we would generally get with a kit such as the canopy and the landing gear that we will still need to create to produce that model that we're going to build from plans. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and uh, it's given you insight and encouraged you to start building from plans because it really is a rewarding way to build those models that we fly.